Street Squad, what's up? Let's get into this episode. What's up, Street Squad? It's your boy, A.T. With another episode of the Street Smart Christian, we have another topic today that was submitted by one of our Street Squad members. And today's topic is going to be on bum, 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 anxiety. Anxiety, everybody's evil part of them. Anxiety, the part that makes you sweat and nervous fearful oh it just makes you want to explode so we're going what we're going to do is we're going to dive into anxiety and what the bible says really what we should do about anxiety and all the studying i did i listened to three hours of sermons two hours of macarthur an hour of alistair and all that time diving into the bible listening to stir- sermons from great pastors great theologians listening to that thing you can listen to hours and it just comes down to one thing and it's the one answer that nobody wants to hear is uh don't don't be anxious well at that's really easy for you to say and you no, know, i'm not saying it's easy it's not in fact the bible says it's not in fact the bible doesn't even deny that there is a, such a thing as anxiety it brings it up. It says, cast your anxiety onto him. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast your anxiety onto him. That's funny. Casting is, is it's not just like, uh, here, Jesus, here you go. You care for me. Here you go. No, casting, whip that stuff at him. Throw it at him. Jesus is saying, throw that anxiety on to me because i care for you i don't want to see you having a panic attack i don't want to see you worried about everything the world does absolutely the world wants to see all of us i mean that's what it's designed to do is to make you fearful because who is the prince of this world tick tock tick tock answer please Satan. Satan is the prince of this world. So why wouldn't the prince of this world want this world to make you fearful of everything? Flying, climbing, heights, spiders. Everything. Excuse me. (coughs) Every single thing is designed to make you feel anxiety, nervous. Losing your mind. Crowds. Crowds. I have, I know people that have anxiety just being in front of that. And that's one thing I love. I love being in front of people. I love being in crowds. And some people just can't handle it. They lose their minds. Young folks, hit me up. Hit me up on Street Smart Christian Facebook page, Instagram. And on our email at streetsmartchristian at gmail.com. And let me know what are some things you're anxious about. And let's figure this out together, how we can how we can stop this stuff. Cast it onto Jesus. Nail it to the cross. And let him take over. I mean, ultimately, that's what he wants to do. And us as Christians, we should know that being fearful and filled with anxiety is a sin because we're not putting our trust into Jesus Christ. We're not putting our trust into God. We're basically saying, I'm freaking out because I don't trust that you can take this away from me. Wow, that hit me pretty deep when I heard that. When I heard that, it's like, ah, a lot of us have so much anxiety that we don't give it to God, but yet we will go 29,000 feet above altitude on an airplane and have the pilot say, okay, go ahead and take your seatbelt off and relax for the rest of this flight. And you will go to sleep trusting in him, but you can't trust in God to take the anxiety away from you, to go into crowds, to try new things, 
to step out on that ledge a little bit. Now, if you're someone who is suffering with, with major stress issues, anxiety, and stuff like that, and you need help, therapist, I, I once again, I advise seeking out a Christian therapist um, to help you get through those things. Some people have to take medications, and I'm not dogging you. I'm not saying you shouldn't take medications, but we just need to learn that the reason all this is happening is because in this world, they tell us. That we should be anxious. It's okay to be anxious. And here's some here's some medicine that might that make that go away. But you have to keep taking this every day that costs you money to get the anxiety out of there. When the truth of the matter is right here in Scripture. Right here in Scripture. I was reading in Matthew 6, 624, if you want to turn there in your Bible. It says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money well that you might be thinking what does it have to do with anxiety well hmm, has anybody ever thought about money or serving something besides god and you just get this anxiety that takes you over because you can't be perfect at whatever that is making money doing this or maybe you are making money and you're just losing your mind because at this point you're just like i have to have this money because everybody's counting on me well, you can't serve that and serve God at the same time. When also he goes into Matthew six twenty six, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store up away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Boom! That came from the man himself, Jesus Christ. And he's telling this to the disciples, and he's telling this to to I, to everybody who's listening on this. Look at the birds in the air. They do they do not sow or reap or store away in barns. That means they don't need anything. They don't have anything that they don't need. You don't see a a bird driving a Bentley. You don't see a bird having to have that. You know, brand new pair of shoes that everybody at school has. That bird doesn't have the the newest beats in their ears because God gives them everything that they need. And what Jesus is saying here is that we are more valuable to God than the birds. So why wouldn't he take care of us more than he takes care of the birds? Because he cares for us more than he cares for the birds. He cares for everything, but he makes sure they have everything they need. Why wouldn't he make sure that you have everything you need? He will give you the ability to think for yourself, to go out there and make that money, to earn them new pair of shoes and do that kind of stuff. But you first got to put your trust in him and do not ignore him and try to get all those things. You might not get it tomorrow. You might not get it in a month or year, two years, three years, five years. We don't, I don't know. I don't know what God's plan is, but you have to trust in his plan. I didn't trust in his plan for a long time and <laughs> it didn't work out too good for your boy AT here. Didn't work out very well at all, but I learned that why trusting him now things are starting to turn around. Do I still have bad days? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, a little bit more about my past. I I can't remember if I had anxiety growing up. I don't think so, but we didn't know what anxiety was really. Um, in my opinion, anxieties really became a huge deal. I'm sure it's been around forever. Obviously it's in the Bible, but people taking medications and just being paranoid about everything within the last 15 years, 20 years. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, hit me up, hit me up on the, on the email or just leave me a comment below. But it's like, holy cow. It's, it's. It just seems more, there's more to be anxious about. And people want to make you more anxious about things. And it's, I see people struggle and I feel bad for, I pray for them all the time. I feel so horrible for people who struggle with this because it is a crippling disease. And, but it is a disease that can be fixed through Jesus Christ. It can be fixed through Jesus Christ. But, no, oh, that's easier said than done. We'll go over here to Luke 12. 
Luke 12, and this is what MacArthur was really driving home. I listened to his sermon, uh, Anxiety Free Living. If you're interested, check it out, gracetoyou.org. Go into there. He's got a search engine. You can just type in anxiety, and it pops up with a whole bunch of stuff on there. But I listened to his sermon, Anxiety Free Living, Part 1, Luke 12, 22 through 25. And, and this is, again, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. We're going back to the birds here. Yet God feeds them. See, that's that's just, just it. You, God, just not just the birds, guys. God feeds the insects. He feeds the the coyotes. He feeds the rats. He feeds the mice. He feeds the deer. He feeds everything. But Jesus is trying to take it home on, aren't you more important than these things? So why, you know, he takes care of them. They're not freaking out. And how much more valuable and how much more valuable you are than birds. See? Who of you are worrying can add a single hour to your life. That's another thing that really you got to sit back by freaking out and worrying about all this stuff doesn't add any more time. Matter of fact, I believe it takes away days of your life. Now, you know, that's what I believe. I know that God's got all of our days numbered. Um, he knows exactly what it is, but I'm sure I, I sure would like to go through it without the anxiety and, you know, casting it all onto him. I, I sure like that. I serve a God that says, give it to me. I'll take it away from you. How many of you guys can say that your boss, your therapist, your doctor, or your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, best friend, enemy, whatever, would say, all those problems you're having and freaking out, why don't I just take it from you and I'll just... T-. Nobody's going to do that because nobody wants to feel like that. Nobody. So they're not going to... But then Jesus says, give it to me. I'll take it. That's, that's, such, that's everybody in the world. The suffering for, if they just give it to him, he'll take it. He'll take it and he'll dig it real deep down in a hole and stomp it to the ground and take it away. You'll never see it again. Just trust in him. But that's hard for us to do as a society because the TV, the computer, the commercials, everybody's telling us, well, if you feel anxious, just do this. Side effects are your head might fall off, but hey, take this. Side effects are that you may never talk to anybody again in your entire life, but just take this. You'll feel better. Your stomach will feel better. When the number one prescription is written in the Bible, Jesus wrote this prescription for anxiety right here in the Bible. Right here. Consider the wildflowers grow. How the wildflowers grow. Luke 12, 27. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. God made these beautiful, beautiful flowers. Beautiful flowers. And people getting anxious about, I gotta be this way, I gotta look this way, I gotta look this way. Well, you're never gonna get... To look like one of these beautiful flowers. Because God made you perfect the way you are. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about the clothes, the makeup, the fingernails. Boys, don't worry about how much starch you can put on your jeans, how much polish you can put on your boots. The best hat, the best Nikes, the best of the best of the best of the best of the best still can't even compare to things that God has already made. And you're worried about it. You're freaking out. You're freaking out. 28, if that is how God clothes, clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into a fire, how much more will he clothe you? You of little faith. There's that prescription bottle and pill faith right there. The flowers die, they wilt, they get ran over, they get burned, they get ate by them deer that he's feeding. The grass, same thing. But he takes care of you a lot better. 
you just put your faith in him. Just put your faith in him. You know, I, I I only ever experienced anxiety in my life when I was doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. Or I knew people knew that I had done things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. Hmm. But when I stopped doing all those things that I wasn't supposed to be doing, and I put my trust in God, it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in a week, in a month, in a year. But after time of truly, 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 because I'm going to tell you right now, you can't just look up to the sky right now in whatever situation you're in and say, Jesus, just take this all away. Now he will. But it's going to come right back in the next day as soon as you stop putting your trust into Jesus. You got to do it every day. You got to have that conversation with our Lord and Savior every day. God, I'm not perfect and I'm a sinner, but please help me walk the way that you walk. Please help me love the way that you love. Lead me in the way that you need me to go and please take this anxiety from me. Take this devil from me. Take it. And he will. Luke 12, 32 says, Do not be afraid, little flock. Your father... Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. See what I mean? That's what we got to look forward to. The kingdom. He didn't say he's going to let you see a little piece of the kingdom. He's not going to let you look through the windows. It's yours. Your kingdom. In 33, this 1233 says, Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moths destroy. For where your trevor, treasure is, there your heart will be. Those are powerful words right there. Powerful words spoken by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Hey, how many people can you do that? I bet... I can feel the anxiety coming off of somebody who thinks of that. Sell everything you have. Give all the money you made from everything you had to the poor. Store up treasures in heaven. Because you can't take it here when you go. You know, and the, 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 the crowds, the thing like that, the media, everybody everybody gets anxious to be in crowds. They, get, they just feed it for feed it to you and feed it to you it's, it's i understand why people take drugs and drink and go on eating binges and shopping binges and wild adventures and all kinds of things to fill their minds with other thoughts we are living in an anxiety ridden culture that's what it is that's what they want you to do it's nothing wrong with you it's it's been you've been brainwashed it's been drilled in your head from day one that it you don't do this. This is what's going to happen. Well, let me tell you what. If you don't put your trust in the Lord Jesus, you better be anxious because you're not going to a nice place. If you don't accept him as your Lord and Savior, yeah, there's going to be nothing but tears and gnashing of teeth and anxiety. I'm sure we'll follow you there. So guys, I, I could get into this. I mean, I wish I had the, uh, I wish I could take all your anxiety away. I can't. Jesus can cast all your anxiety onto him. First Peter five, seven, five, seven. Like I said, it doesn't deny that there's anxiety out there. It just says, give it to Jesus. Throw it not on anyone or anything else, but the Lord humble yourself before God. And you are casting your anxiety to him. Humble yourself before God. You're throwing it all on him. Kids, I promise you, if you do this, it will save your life. It'll save you money. It'll save your relationships with your family, your friends. And it'll build a stronger relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Trust me. Trust me. Anxiety goes with a million different things in this world. And I don't understand all of them, but I understand some. And now the only thing, you can listen to a thousand podcasts, a thousand sermons. The 
best of the best and they're going to tell you the same thing cast your anxiety onto him be anxious for nothing but in everything be in prayer and petition pray it you start getting anxious you got to pray about it you've got to got to got to pray constantly if you're somebody who's anxiety ridden all day long then you've got to pray 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 I mean, and, and, and sometimes, you know, that's hard to do. But it says right there in Philippians 4, 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests. Present your requests. To who? Who do you think? Who do you think? We'll take a minute, Ram. Let's see if anybody can answer me on that. Because if you say anything other than God, then you're wrong. Just going to say it right there. Then you're wrong. I'm going to say it again. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. To ask God, take this from me. Help me be able to go into crowds. Help me to go to functions. Help me to fly in an airplane. Help me. Help me. And, and then what happens, and, and the peace of God will transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Take those negative thoughts out of your head and think of all these things, the good things, the great things. Jesus Christ will save your life. I promise you. I promise you guys. Cast it all onto him. First Peter 5 says and 5 7 right there. Most of uh, we're talking about anxiety. Jesus is talking to the he's, it's in the red letters. He's talking about it. Be anxious for nothing. Be in prayer petition. Requests to God. Cast it onto him. He wants to take it all from you. Let's beat this beast together. Do not let the prince of this world, Satan, clout your minds any longer. Set your hearts free and let's do this. I'm going to cut this a little bit short. I don't know. You guys need to let me know. Hit me up on uh, Facebook, Instagram, or the email. Or you can even go over to Street Smart Christian on YouTube. Leave me some messages. If you go to YouTube, like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification. It will send an alert to you every time I put one of these out. My wife is getting really close to having a baby, so I'm sorry if these things aren't coming out as quickly as I'd like to. We're really trying to focus on that, getting things together. I love you guys. I want to give my shout-outs to my friend Melanie over at Melanie McKnight Photography. Thank you so much. She just took our... Um, paternity photos i guess whatever they were beautiful that's all i know they were beautiful they were perfect she is a true professional she gets down in the dirt to get the good pictures literally gets down in the dirt takes the good pictures hit up her son at tanner creations he's making earrings he's making jewelry for the ladies fellas this guy can hook you up he can do it he can make it right Swing on over to Facebook. Check out my friends over at BK Antiques for all your antique needs, auction needs, selling antiques, want to buy antiques. Check them out on Facebook. Right now, that's the only thing I really know they got. I will get with them, see if they have a website too, but check them out. BK Antiques, Facebook, Melanie McKnight Photography. She does have a web night. website. Web night. I can't even talk today. Melanie McKnight Photography on Instagram, Facebook, um, MelanieMcKnightPhotography.com, McKnightPhotography.com. Check them out. Schedule an appointment with her today. Tanner Creations is on Facebook. Just type in Tanner Creations. Boom, pops it up. He's got these jewelry hanging on poker cards. Check them out, guys. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Remember, cast your anxiety onto him because he cares for you. 
Let us pray. Father God, I just ask that you be with each and every one of us as we go on with our week. We thank you for the recent snows that we just had. We desperately need the moisture in the ground, Father. And we thank you for the warm weather that's coming. Father, I just ask that you would humble our minds, soften our hearts, help us walk more like you, and, and let us know that it's okay to cast those anxieties onto you. Cast them onto you, be in prayer and petition, and just really put all of our trust into you. Show us what it feels like to really put our trust into you. Father, I pray these things in your name. Amen. Thanks, guys, for listening. Send me some more questions. Send me some more topics, and we will get into it next time on Street Smart Christian. Later!